So I thought I'd do a much more complete review of the car now that it's almost complete. So starting at the front, we've obviously got the hydro dipped covers here, I've made of fiberglass, but dipped in like carbon fiber film. Um, I'll explain more on that later on. We've got the black bolts there, um, as suggested by a couple of users on Reddit, just to sort of lose the kit car look a bit more. Um, up the top is the LED side lights. It's got three LEDs in it, super bright, white, nice modern looking. Um, do the job perfectly actually with a rubber grommet just to keep it waterproof as well. On the right hand side, we've got the LED side lights. This is a custom light, so it's a piece of frosted like rubber in the hole, a bit of orange film underneath, and some bright LEDs underneath, which I've actually just upgraded to be brighter than they were before, so they were brilliant. Then we've got two 90mm projection lamps. The dipped is running a 35 watt HID kit. I chose 35 watt and 50 watt just so it's not too bright um, for oncoming cars. I didn't want to be you know, blinding anyone from that. So onto the front arches of the car. You can see there's not got any ripples in it. It's really good. I mean, the car hasn't even been mopped properly yet, but the paint's looking really good already. There's quite a bit of ride height between the tire and the arch. That's just down to the roads. I chose it to be like that. So now we're on to the tyres. The tyres I've gone for are Falcon 453. I've had Falcon before and they're a great tyre for the price. They're, in this case you'll see the sizes because I put them up on the screen for us. They give a great grip for the amount of money you're spending. And uh, you'll notice there also I've gone for the same tyre profile on the side. Now that's not normally the norm but I was after a bit more comfort. Hence I've gone for that and with my computer for the speedometer I'm able to program, program in the wheel circumference so it won't take my speedo out. Now here we are moving on to the calipers. The calipers are from a Nissan Skyline. They're four pop calipers. They originally had Nissan on the side, but that was sanded away. The calipers were refurbed and um, Brembo stuck, stickers stuck on because I believe they were developed with them. Also using Supra 324 millimeter front discs. And the wheels themselves are Rotogrid 19 inch wheels. Um, the details are on the screen as well. Now, the reason I went with Rotogrid was partly price, everything has a budget and obviously this was a full build so the more money you can spend on the wheels probably the lighter they are and obviously you know, the better sizes and not sets. So here you can see the hydro dipping process I talked about earlier performed on the wheels. You can see how it's straight, it's got a really nice gold and silver like colour to it when you see it in person and does appear to have some depth. I'm, I'm hoping all the video will show that, it looks pretty good to me. Um, and everyone who sees them in person as well is always blown away by the finish that was um, done on them. And, and to be fair, so am I, especially with the bigger lip at the rear of the car. So on the screen is obviously a video here. You should be able to click on that and it just shows you how you'd be able to do it at home if you wanted. In this case, I did choose to have it done professionally because of the size of the wheels. But if you wanted to give it a go, you can obviously do it at home. And there's many prints. You don't have to do carbon. You know, they do skulls for motorbike and uh, fuel tanks, etc. So you know, you're not stuck to one thing. So moving on then, and we're on to the wing mirrors. Now, anyone who's seen the previous videos will have saw what was being used for the test. These are eight E-Tech wing mirrors. Now, I went for this model mainly because the glass has got such good visibility from it. It's got a really nice concave or convex um, look to them, and you get really good visibility compared to what it I was getting before. Now, the front wiper arm, Front wiper arm is a driver side wiper arm for an MR2 but it's extended, it's also got a slight twist to it to keep the blade in contact with the screen all the time and a much bigger wiper. The actual mechanism underneath had to be changed so that the angle the arm swept was um, the correct angle for the windscreen. So that was pretty simple to do with a, a small cut and weld just to change the amount of swing. So in the front end engine bay as such there's not that much, there's the battery, the radiator and fans, horns, brake reservoir wiper motor, wiring loom and more bracing like on the radiator to keep it still and also the motor. So the reason I put the battery at the front was to keep the weight up at the front. So one of the things with kit cars that I always brought up is door lines. So I wanted to do this quickly just to show that the door lines are good and it can be good. So I wanted to get away from that kit car feel. Now as well as good lines like them, we've obviously got the vents there that are functional to feed the air vent and up here I'm showing you the struggles. When there's only one of you or two of you building these cars, it's hard to get all lines built up, especially with a large clam, as you can see there. So when you're doing that, it's, it, you can get it, and I feel I will get it, but it just takes time. So moving on, obviously the doors open in a pivot fashion on the side and the front, or should I say the side and the roof. Now, when they're opened, it's not the easiest to get in and out of, but I don't think this car was designed with practicality in mind, to be honest. 
Now what I'm showing here is I had overheating issues and what's really key is those two side front vents must be ducted to the radiator and that's ducted at the sides as well as underneath and above. In other words, forcing all air through the radiator. I went from temperatures of 220 degrees Fahrenheit down to 180 like it should be by doing the ducting correctly. So it just shows you that mechanically you do have to do the right design as well as the looks to get this working properly. Now the interior is at a very basic stage. I did this when I was building, consciously built it just to pass. So we've got some Cobra Monaco seats and then a Momo wheel. Now, as you can see, it, it actually looks all right in this, but it, it for me, it's not good enough. Over this winter, it'll be completely rebuilt. And rebuilt as in the design will roughly be the same, which is why I'm showing it, but the finish will be improved with a flocked dash and I hope some hydro dipping in there as well. Now on to the engine bay. So obviously this is how it opens, but just before we get onto that, there is something else I want to show you. So you will have noticed the roof scoop on the car. Now the roof scoop, although I don't think profile at the front suits it very well, it could have been cut in a slanted manner, but I thought about that after it had been sprayed, probably a little bit too late, but it does feed the engine bay. Now as you can see there, the scoop sits on the roof and the rear canopy is slightly higher, so hence the air can go in there. But as well as that, I wanted to do something else with the cabin to just give that bit of fresh air. So inside the uh, roof scoop, I've actually got what is a rally vent sat in there. Now in the UK, these are extremely expensive at like £150. So I'm actually putting details in the video of an American place I got it from that they're identical but used for the vans over there. And I think it worked out at like £40 delivered, um, including all the import taxes, etc. So I just wanted to put that on there to help people out. So at the heart of the car, we've obviously got the fuel tank, it's 52 litres, it's done, it is quite a square design so in there there are multiple baffles to help the fuel stay at the fuel pump and they're actually doing a good job, um, quite good normal mileage of a normal car, 250 mile range. To pass the UK IBA test, obviously all the wiring and the fuel lines are highly secured around the car so it's just a good example there of how neat and how secure it has to be. To be honest, it looks nice like that. I didn't want to build an ugly car and that includes under the skin where you're not going to see on a day-to-day -day basis. So the engine itself. So it's a free SGTE. Um, some details on the video here of what's been done to it. It's about 290 brake, which to be quite honest is plenty. Um, it's always nice to have more, but on a day-to-day -day basis driving it, you barely put your foot down to that level and it's reliable, which is also a key part. The advantage of going with this engine initially is that if I do want to upgrade and get more power, I can go for the 3.5 litre Lotus Evora engine. It will drop onto the gearbox, same engine mounts, etc. Just some other changes, but will be nice and easy to put in there with uh, an extra 100 dollars brake or so. Now we're on to the rear of the car. An area that has been tricky for me to do from the beginning. It's not an area I've liked um, as much as the rest of the car. So I've kind of kept it simple this stage but made the changes I want. So I put three vents in the roof area, one to get rid of heat but two to break up the solid area. We've got the lights on either side, they're both 122 millimeters. Now they're standard lights, you can even get them from um, kit car um, website so I'll put a few on the end of this video. And they're, they're not bad to be honest, they fit very easily, they've got good wiring, they do the job they need to do. So when I first had this done, I had this center area that you're seeing now actually in red, but I didn't like it, it didn't feel right, so I wanted to do something with it. So the simplest solution seemed to be plastic it, which I've seen on the internet before. So I bought a cam, gave it a spray, and you know what, the job it's done is really good. Um, it's split up the area really, really nicely. So I'm leaving that on for now, I may take it off. Now I've just done this part of the video to show you that for such a large area, the outsides are very, very, very smooth, and there's not as much warping what I would call across the center as um, you might think. Obviously under this reflection you're going to see a lot but you can just see the center bit, yeah a bit, but the outsides and the roof is really really good. So we've got a rear view camera there on the left hand side, night vision as well in it and the exhaust which is a twin exit exhaust which I will probably change for something a bit better. So this is how the car sits at the moment. The paint name is actually on the screen hopefully at the moment in the video. Um, future wise I want to get rid of the dated rear lights at the rear, maybe make them look LED and working on that at the moment, obviously change the interior. So there will be future updates coming along um, as always. I'd just like to put at the end of this video a quick list of uh, people or, or companies, should I say, that I want to thank for either the parts they've supplied really well or the good work they've done. So I've listed them on the screen with some of them, hopefully some websites just to help everyone else out as well. I guess the final thing to say is what the questions that I get generally in is, 
would you do this again etc and all those type of things so would I do it again yeah I'd do it again I mean you have to go into this with your eyes open a kit car such a generic term this kit as such is a chassis and shell with some other token parts it's not a complete guide there's no instructions to build in this car there's no parts outside that you have to collect everything from donor vehicles and then build it to meet the regulations for your country the UK is one of the stricter countries but not the strictest by um, any stretch of the imagination so if I've managed to build this then there's no reason why anyone else can't and hopefully the videos I've put and the pictures etc help that person um, if you've got any questions just post them in the comments etc and I'll answer what I can thanks for watching